What? Are we going? We am, I, am I pasty? Yeah. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome in. Uh, we're here at SHOT Show 2019. My name's Nick uh, with Loophold, and we're going to talk a little bit about the new uh, observation and rangefinder thermal products that we have out here. I'm lucky enough to have Eric with me. Uh, Eric is our PLM, our product line manager over these products, and really the that the head right behind all this cool stuff that you guys are seeing. So you got to get a cool behind the scenes look at uh, w what it takes to, to, to bring this stuff, why we do this stuff right. Uh, it, it, it's kind of a cool uh, uh, thing to get to see. So Eric, uh, welcome in. Thank you. Yep. So uh, let's talk about the first big new product that we have for this year, which is that RBX 3000 rangefinder, right? It is. That's been your baby for a while now, yeah. <laughs> I In the, the 10 years that I have worked for Loophold, uh, this has to be the number one most requested product that I've ever <laughs> I, I would say it's really nice this year because, like, every year someone comes in the booth. Not someone. A lot of people come in the booth, and they're like, hey, do you have a range-finding binocular? And this year we can be like, yes, it's right here. <laughs> yeah. Right? I, I know that I personally have probably worked on four different versions of this product. We, um, we just never felt like we had it right before. We either had size limitations or right. weight problems, uh, but we think this product gets it right. So I think that's a really important thing, right, is that, we could have been quick out of the gate to get a product on the market, uh, but it may not have been the the best product, right? And that's something that at Lupo we take really seriously, is making sure that we have a quality product. And I, I think you've said it to me a couple times, like taking a rangefinder or a binocular and going like that isn't as easy as just you know, sticking them together or taping a binocular to or taping a rangefinder to it, right? Yeah, that that is. Um it's it's one of the the thoughts out there. People always think, hey, I can put a, a and P B together to make C, and right. that it should be you know a lot less expensive right. uh, and easy to do. Uh, it's actually just the opposite with a rangefinder. Right. Yeah. I mean, once you start incorporating electronics and having to shoot lasers out and receive them back in, that can play issues with the optical system, right? Yeah. And getting those two to work in conjunction with each other is is really hard, actually. Right. Yep. Yeah. And that, that's one thing about this product uh, that I've heard the feedback. We had it at Range Day yesterday, and we had guys, you know, uh, looking through it. They were amazed at the clarity, too, of the optical system. So it's not just that you're getting a 3,000-yard rangefinder also, but, like, the, the quality of the binos themselves is really stellar. Th this binocular is world class. Um, we've run it through the lab. We would put it up against anybody's product out there, and I believe we will win. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about let's talk about the yardage because that's the first thing that hits people first. So three thousand, right? Um, and three thousand that's on reflective targets. Correct. But the big thing to talk about rangefinders is the soft targets, right? Yeah. Yeah. So talk a little bit more about that for people who don't know about that kind of stuff. We spec it at uh, trees for 2,600 and deer at 2,200. Um, it's going to vary based on environmental conditions uh, and what the target is. But I can tell you yesterday they were hitting rocks in the desert at 2,800 yards with us. Yeah, again, we were at range day and we're, guys were hitting rocks at 2,800. And that's, that's phenomenal performance. So, I mean, you can make a, you can make a range finder and have a really high reflective distance. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily, that's not the real world. That's I correct. know when I'm out hunting and shooting, there's not a lot of stop signs uh, to be able to be ranging, right? The, the animals do not have reflective <laughs> colors. Yeah, they're not <laughs> wearing their vests, their <laughs> reflective vests, right? So uh, you want a rangefinder that's going to perform in those real-world conditions where you're at. And that's really what we've done I, with our whole rangefinder lineup, yep. really, uh, is to be able to have that performance. Uh, run uh, over some uh, a couple other features of that RBX there. Uh, we have the display in the right channel, okay. and it's an LED display. Uh, and uh, we have set it up so that it will work in super daylight bright conditions. Is that uh, the benefit of the LED? Is correct. that it's a brighter display? We're able to drive okay. it a lot harder. Okay, cool. So even in the yeah bright daytime, you might see some washout with other mo uh, uh, competitors' models or something. So we really uh, focused on being able to have that usability, right? To be correct. able to see it. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah. So in the snow or in uh, conditions where say you're you're ranging against hay. Uh, out doing some prairie dog shooting or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't have any problems being able to see the display. 
Uh, so we have a, a right diopter here to focus the display with. Okay. Then you use your center focus knob to focus your right channel. Okay. And then you use your left diopter to focus your left channel. And then everything should be lined up focus-wise. That's correct. And then you use your center wheel to adjust your focus from far targets to near targets and, correct. and stuff like that. Yeah. We have our, uh, the number one button here is our mode setup button, uh, and that's very consistent with our TBRW products. Okay. Uh, you can change between yards and meters and uh, outputting in mills or MOA. Yeah. Uh, and then the second button uh, is an atmospheric sensor button. Oh, uh, okay. And so if you push that, you will be able to get your temperature, pressure, humidity, uh, and your environmental conditions so that you can plug it into a ballistic app. That's awesome. Yeah, speaking of ballistics, too, yeah, I think you mentioned it, that has our TBRW uh, system on there, right? Correct. Yeah, so what is that TBR system? As some of you might be familiar. It's been on some of our other rangefinders, but it's good to uh, run through it again. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so our TBRW stands for two True Ballistic Range, and the W stands with Wind. Uh, and what this does is we've got 25 ballistic profiles in here. So you choose what your load is yeah. uh, based on a... Uh, collection of data that we provide you. Right. Uh, and then we, uh, once you've programmed that in, we will give you accurate information out to half a MOA at 600 yards and wow. one MOA at 800 yards. That's crazy. So it's actually a very, very accurate system, even though they're preset settings. You say that to some people and they're like, well, it's not specific to my ballistics. Correct. But you're like, actually, it's, it's pretty specific. I mean, within an MOA at 800 yards, is yep. better than I can shoot sometimes, you know. Well, a lot of the time, actually. So it, yeah. it, It's once <laughs> you get past 800 that a lot of those factors really start to make a difference. Right. And so this is a great, it's a, an easy solution for people to set up. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put in a thousand different numbers. You right. put in one number. Yeah. And, um, and it works great. If you were to get past 800 yards, you'd go from 25 different uh, ballistic groups to you know, a thousand, right, right. Just, just adding, you know, a hundred yards in there. Right, right. And that's, uh, that'd be super complicated, a little overwhelming there. So who, uh, wh why did we design this, this binocular? Like who, who are we thinking that is going to find use for this? Or like, wh how are you going to use it in the field, right? I can think of a ton of different ways, but. It, it's the customer that wants to consolidate product. Yeah, right. Uh, the, it's, the, it's the guy that's been calling us saying, hey, we're, we're tired of carrying around two different items. We want to stick it in one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and have the performance in that one item, correct. too. Yeah, yeah, not skimping on that. Certainly this would be a dream for any guide out there uh, or any Western hunter. But yeah. for a guide who needs to provide updated shot distances uh, for their client, yeah. uh, they're able to do that on the fly along with having – uh, a world-class set of optics. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, back to the guide thing and to the optics portion. If you're a guide and, uh, well, actually just anyone, if you're glassing a lot, um, if you have a lesser binocular, right, or, or that has issues, you're going to have eye fatigue. And we talk about that a lot uh, with binocular design, right? And designing these binoculars to make sure that you uh, mitigate or don't have any eye fatigue so that you're on the glass more. I mean, yeah. the more time spent behind the glass, you're going to be able to be more successful in the field, sure. right? Uh, so that's really important, too, yeah, for the, for the guide. Um, also, actually, uh, a lot of the guys uh, uh, that we showed to yesterday, uh, you know, are doing more of the PRS or long-range style competitions. They're really interested in it, too. Maybe instead of taking a spotting scope and then having your binos and having your range finder, you know, just have that out there. You can spot your targets, range them all in one and uh, have less kit that you have to take with you, to, you know, ruck to each stage or whatever, you know. So, sure. Yeah. And There's get your environmental data yep. for your ballistic. And app. your environmental, yeah, yeah. right? So, uh, and again, like, maybe you have to take your Kestrel out to do that, uh, but now you can do that on your binoculars too. So um, a, lot of, a lot of great features packed into that one set. So um, we're really excited about it. Um, Let's, uh, let's talk about some other things, too. Let's roll into some other rangefinders here. These aren't necessarily new, but we just want to touch on them again. 
Um, I think the 1600 has been really, really popular, right? It is. The uh, We introduced this a year ago. Yeah. Uh, it's in our, our Blaze orange camo pattern. I like to say yeah. that this is the second range finder that somebody's going to buy. <laughs> uh, after they've lost their first, they'll appreciate the Blaze orange color. Right. Uh, and at first you see it and you're like, oh, that's a little, that's a little strong. But you get out in the field and, yeah, you drop your range finder and then you'd be like, man, I wish I had that Blaze yeah. orange <laughs> range finder. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's been really popular. That has our uh, a TBR system on there as well. Correct. Same thing that we talked about there. 2800 has been really, really popular too. Um, and, again, that performance, 2800 yards reflected, but the, the soft target performance on these range finders are, are phenomenal, right? They are. Yeah, on that 2800. It, it, the performance is actually almost very similar between the two. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we have the same engine in this. Um, we started shipping this the middle of last year, uh, and this product has done great for us. Yeah. Uh, when I do all side-by-side -side testing, any other products that are in the same price point as this, uh, we outperform it by at least 30%. Yeah. Yeah, we in integrated the Alpha IQ system. There was stuff we did with the beam divergence and stuff like that, right? Can you talk a little bit about that we, for you we guys? We science the hell out of we it. We science the hell out of it. <laughs> well, that becomes really important at those longer ranges when you're ranging, right? Yeah. If you have a large beam divergence, you could be picking up objects that maybe you don't want to be ranging, right? Mm -hmm. And you gotta you got to be able to pinpoint. Um, I know for me, uh, shooting a lot of long-range matches, that's very important because I need I need very exact yardages and they'll they'll do it on purpose right there'll be a stage where they they uh, cut a hole through a tree right and you got to shoot through the tree uh, and but and a lot of guys are ranging the tree right yeah. uh, but you got to have that that type beam divergence to actually hit the target that you're aiming at um, it's got a uh, uh, speaking of uh, long range trying to range targets it's got a tripod uh, tripod mount on the bottom too it which does. is really nice yep. you can put it on a monopod or something and really secure it down uh, it does get a little hard when you're ranging uh, distances like that. You want to make sure it's real stable, right? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Running down the... They, uh, that's going to be a trick uh, with all of the range finders now that we're yeah. pushing further and further distances. Is yeah. Holding steady is important. Um, I will tell you that with this and the Alpha IQ engine in both these products, uh, the 2800 and the binocular, mm -hmm. uh, we have sped up our pulse rate incredibly inside oh, of this. Oh, that's right, the pulse rate, yeah. And so the the need to hold it steady isn't nearly as important as it has been on the previous oh. gen engines that we have. Okay, yeah. I think that's important too. I think uh, the pulse rates across the whole lineup are really good. And does that, in, uh, does that uh, factor into how fast you get readings back to you also? Uh, that's more inside of the engine itself. I'm, uh, I'm a simpleton, so actually I am asking because I don't know. <laughs> uh, s a sp speed of light is con is constant. Yeah. So when right. we send a laser out and we get it back in, yeah, uh, it's going to take the same amount of time no matter what. Uh, but it's like the processing power inside the unit Correct. that yeah. And I've noticed that these are really really quick. They as are as far as getting getting uh, readings back. Yeah. Based on our previous engine, essentially uh, what our engineers have been able to do, and I think our engineers are one of our biggest differentiators at Loophold. Yeah. Uh, we're lucky enough to be in a, in a mecca of technology development. It's true. And yeah. our engineers we've pulled out of Tektronics. Yeah. Uh, and these are the guys that build the test and measurement equipment for Intel <laughs> and these other companies that are making cutting edge technologies. Right, yeah. yeah. So, so r right outside Portland, Oregon there, if you guys don't know, they call it the Silicon Forest, right? So yeah. there's a lot of high-tech companies, and we're using that that knowledge, right? Correct. Uh, to help build these things. We're not we're not just going to a supplier and being like, hey, we need a we need a 2,800 yard range finder. What do you got? Yeah. We're actually designing everything. I mean, you walk into the lab there, and there's guys that have there's boards and cables plugged in and yeah. stuff everywhere and transistors. I mean, it looks like a mad mad scientist, you know, lab. Our yeah. our team had been working on this engine for three years. And three years. Uh, wow. So the, to answer your question, a little yeah. techno speak here. <laughs> yeah. Um, essentially, what we were able to do is offload almost all of the processing work into an FPGA okay. inside of this, and that's where you're able to see the speed okay. come from. Is is the improvements that we've made inside of that? Gotcha. Yeah. So it's like uh, it's like taking an engine and kind of hot rodding it, right? Yeah. We kind of bored out some cylinders and yeah. you know <laughs> the extra fuel injection and all that kind of good stuff. Um, cool. Awesome. Yeah. So check out the rangefinder lineup if you guys haven't seen it. Um, definitely a lot of cool stuff going on there. 
Speaking of other new stuff, we got uh, new things happening on the LTO tracker uh, level here too. So you might be familiar with our trackers. Uh, we came out with that a couple years ago for game recovery. Yeah. Uh, and we've upped the game this year with our tracker two and our tracker uh, HD two. Um, so actually let's talk about the tracker HD, or excuse me, tracker two HD first. Um, so it's a lot of the features, the same resolution as the tracker HD. Uh, before, but the main feature I want to talk about is that beacon mode. Can you run through beacon mode uh, for us a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, w when we introduced the original trackers, we allowed you to see in the dark. Uh, but once the daylight hours broke right. and things started to heat up, uh, you weren't sure if you were looking at two track roads, at animals, at yeah. water. Or, or what was happening, and so right. uh, we came up with this beacon mode, and what it allows you to do is anything that has the bright hot modes, mm -hmm. so when you turn it on you see that red okay. reflecting heat, or indicating heat, Okay. Uh, what beacon mode does is it rebalances all of those hot items back down into grayscale, so that anything hot that pops out now will appear as a red hot item. Yeah, it stands out even more. Correct. So that's yeah. So, so during daytime, ambient temperatures are higher. Everything is more similar. So it lets you really um, dive in on a certain you know uh, uh, aspect of temperature to to you know, pull out detail that you wouldn't see otherwise, right? It, and then we also have the ability to manually uh, adjust gain control in it as well. Yeah. Uh, so for Customers that are in a whitetail area, per se, okay, uh, and you might have a deer out in, in a food plot, okay, you can actually balance the gain control on that deer so yeah. that if another deer, if you're if you're out doing recovery, you'll yeah. be able to see that deer and it'll pop up. Oh, uh, wow! Being that red hot color again. So it's it's uh, we've added some versatility to the unit then to be able to use it in uh, in more conditions to make it perform better in more conditions. Yep. Uh, than previous versions. We're, we're extending the usability into daylight hours. Yeah, that's super good. We, yeah. we also simplified the UI. Um, okay. We It's just simple button push now for Zoom. We don't do the infinity zoom anymore. Yeah. Um, and the you can turn the display down all the way. Oh, and dimmable. You, dimmable display. Yeah, yeah. And if you turn it off and you turn it back on again, mm -hmm. we will save what those turn off conditions were. So that if you're walking around at night mm -hmm. uh, and you had had the display all the way down, when yeah. you turn it back on, it's not going to come back on at full speed, yeah. full steam. It's going to come back on yeah. at that lower level. I actually really found the dimmable display really useful. We, uh, I was using it for a uh, class. It was a training class, and it was nighttime, and we were, you know, there was a squad of people that were trying to find us. It was, it, and I was using the tracker. And if I had that display all the way up, it would light my face up, right? Yep. It'd give my position away. Yeah. Uh, but I, I dialed it all the way down, and I was able to use the tracker without getting any uh, white light back on my face and able to spot them before they spotted me, which was really cool. So That's the intent. Yeah, especially when you're using sim rounds, you don't want to get shot. So I was wanting to shoot them first. So, uh, and then uses too. Obviously, we use this a lot for, um, we design it for tracking and game recovery, but there's so many uses for these thermal units, there right? There is. I mean, I don't go camping without one because I want to know what's around me, right? If so, something's crashing through the woods, I want to be able to see what it is. Um, home defense, again, just situational awareness, being able to yep. see what's in your backyard, what's downstairs, that kind of stuff. Uh, HVAC. Actually, seeing where you're losing heat in your house, that's another thats another cool one, too. Yeah. Yeah, you can see, like, if you need to replace your seals around your door or whatever. I, I have one in the truck all the time. There's so many instances where you could use this. Yeah. Uh, law enforcement, too. Fire and rescue, we've talked about that before. Uh, law enforcement guys see this, and they're like, I can actually have a thermal unit that's this small and performs this well and just, like, keep it on my belt. Uh, and for that price point, too. Uh, it's uh, th they're just really excited about it. Everyone we, we show it to is super we, excited. We got a great letter from a police officer uh, this past year that uh, actually used it to find a missing child. That's uh, so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, th and that's the kind of stuff, man. We, we, we design this stuff, uh, but then you get stories like that. And uh, it really makes you proud of the products that you're coming out with, it does. right? Yeah. And it, it gives a lot of meaning to the products that we're, you know, we get wrapped up and, you know, shoot and steal the, uh, you know, 1,500 yards is pretty cool. But that kind of stuff really, really motivates us to make uh, products that work in the field, right? And, you know, 
we, we take care of customers, we have warranties, but we make products that are going to perform in the field uh, uh, the first time. That's kind of our big thing, right? So uh, super important to us. Uh, awesome, Eric. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for going through the products here Absolutely. Uh, that you. we have at SHOT Show. Uh, it's really exciting. Um, for you guys uh, who aren't uh, here, uh, if you are here, absolutely come through the booth. Check out the new stuff. Put your hands on it. Play around with it. It's going to be uh, it's, it's awesome stuff. Uh, if not, go to loophole.com. we got more information on these. And until uh, next time, we'll see you. Thanks, Nick. Yep.